So what we would recognize as a human being would start around Lemuria. Exactly. Now, is it true that... But actually, we wouldn't recognize them because they were vastly different to what we are today. We are far more refined than our physical forms today. And also, of course, they were gigantic creatures back in those days. Okay, so they were the giants. They were huge, and they only had one eye on the top of the head, if you can imagine that. Cyclops. Well, yeah, and a lot of the cyclops are usually uh, in art are depicted with the eye and the forehead, which is probably inaccurate. Two-eyed sight, we were told, only started to, to grow, uh, to evolve in human beings in early Atlantis. Oh, okay. The Lemurian giants were the one-eyed cyclops. So, so even though they split into genders, they still only had one eye? That's right, and it's important to understand that, that hermaphrodite Humanity were hermaphrodite before the the, um, the sexual separation period. Yeah, Blavatsky argues that you can see it in the development of the fetus. I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said. Yeah, I, I just said uh, that Blavatsky argued that you could see it in the development of the fetus. Yeah. The, you could see the evolution of mankind in exactly. the fetus. Yes, you can. And the study of embryology would yield a lot of uh, information for anyone who was so, so inclined to trace that evolution, mm. yes. Would, would this eye that they had, would that be uh, a function of the third eye or the pineal gland? Well, the third eye is technically to do with the pituitary gland, but uh, the, the, mm. yes, it would. And, and that, that eye at the back, towards the back of the head, we're told, just from the crown towards the back, was an all-seeing physical eye and spiritual eye, and that eventually receded back into the brain over a few million years and that is something that we can see in in newborn babies where the um, there is the the fontanelle hasn't closed over of the skull and the the actual pineal gland at the center of the brain is the remnant of that eye of that of that first eye as opposed to the third eye you could say mm. But that Lemurian, back in that, you know, my, my next book is going to be called Geography and Giants, where I trace the the, the transformation of the continents and their their uh, change over millions of years. So the Lemurian, the extension from the, through the Atlantic went down around what we now call Africa, but that Africa wasn't there before. Only part of the northern part of Africa was there mm. uh, around through Madagascar, because Madagascar was part of that original Lemuria, hmm. um, across the Indian Ocean to Australia, and then across the Pacific Ocean. So the actual origin, Blavatsky does say, was was in the northern regions, and there are many proofs, geological and otherwise, for that. Yeah, yeah, because we live on uh, Norway. Maybe whole of Scandinavia is actually on the, what's called the Caledonian mountain range, exactly. which is one of the oldest yes. on Earth. So so that could make sense. Yes, Scotland, parts of Scotland yep. and, and so forth. Which is why it's called the Caledonian, because that's the, I, I believe that's the word for Scotland. In Oh, okay. Oh, very interesting, yeah. yeah. Um, so... The, uh, but at one stage, the largest landmass was across the Pacific Ocean extended. Now, Australia is the largest su surviving remnant of that landmass, and you have hundreds or thousands of islands scattered across the Pacific, which are all parts of that old Lemurian continent. Mm. So particularly Easter Island, for instance, is part of that old Lemurian continent. Mm. Uh, Hawaii, um, various... Uh, Various islands throughout the Pacific have these ancient artifacts, statues, buildings, uh, monoliths. Yeah, yeah, on Eastern Island, it's obvious. They're that all Lemurian, but, but uh, not just Island, but many other places. People like David Hatcher Childress have done wonderful work yeah. in going through all those places and exploring them and taking pictures and putting them into books and so forth. Yeah, we're going to interview him. But uh, we, we did talk with Robert Schock, and he's very uh, interested in the Eastern Island, and he argues that they, the, these giant statues are very, very old. So that's corroborating your stuff too, if you say that mm. that goes back to the giants, the Lemurians. Yes, well, I'm glad Robert Schock does say that because, I mean, he's a bit of a skeptic on some things. Um, oh, but, sure. Uh, <laughs> he's, a, he's a hardcore geologist, geologist, scientist, yeah, he has to stick to, to the, the mainstream paradigm as much as possible, you know. 
Well, he doesn't have to, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, if he wants to keep his work, I guess. The statues on Easter Island, Blavatsky says, yeah. um, when Captain Cook discovered, quote-unquote, those statues were, were 10 metres or 30 feet in height, and she says that they were the actual height of the giants that existed on that island about 4 million years ago. And, um, Only four million. Yeah, you, you know, each, I thought the giants were living at the same time as the dinosaurs because everything was bigger then. They were, they were, and there's been proof of that, of course, in the Peruvian eco stones, uh, the carvings where it shows human beings um, battling with dinosaurs. But you know, the whole extinction of the dinosaurs paradigm of 65 million years ago, I think, is incorrect, yeah. and it's more like. 21 million years ago, around about the time of individualization of humanity. Right. And I say this because we are told in the ancient teachings that there was a huge electrical storm that was created in individualization. This was the, the literally the spark of mind or manas was being imparted to humanity at that time, and it destroyed most of the animal kingdom. And that was the, the true death of the dinosaurs. And it did come about through any particular cometary crash into the planet, it was more to do with this electrical storm. Right, right. And from that time onwards, the refinement in the physical vehicle became more and more so as the consciousness developed, which only stands to reason, doesn't it? Indeed. The more refined the consciousness, the more refined the body, the less large it has to be. And Blavatsky says, though, even halfway through Atlantis, the uh, giants had reached their uh, an acme of physical development, of beauty, and had all the secrets of heaven and earth uh, within them. And um, <clears throat> so, you know, there were various stages where basically the, the uh, diminution of the heights of the giants paralleled that of the reptile kingdom. So there were probably still dinosaurs around for a long time after they mentioned it. Yeah, remnants, right? Yes. Uh, we call them dragons in mythology. That, and, but even all the other species probably weren't killed out entirely, so they were around for several million years, I would imagine. Even stories up into recent times, you know, as you say, of dragons and so forth. So, and, and what about Loch Ness? And, and we even have a Loch Ness exactly. monster here in Norway. I don't know if you know it. It's <laughs> in Selio. It's a water. Okay. So there's so, observations of these uh, kind of, I mean, it reminds us of um, aqua dinosaurs, you know. And Exactly. And, you know, there were, this parallel, however, of humanity and the reptiles is, I think, holds well all the way through to present day. So we have our alligators and our Komodo dragons yeah. and so forth. And uh, we have our humans who... Um, are still quite tall. We, st we still have giants on the planet. Yeah. Uh, people who are nine feet tall, and and there are many stories in the last few thousand years from Greek, Roman yeah. mythology, and and universal mythology really that talk about uh, various giants that were. You know, God, it must have been terrible to be a giant <laughs> in the age of the small man. Well, you know, we we were all giants, but however, we are told by Blavatsky as well that there were parallel races of dwarfs as well right. so we had we had opposite and this is going right back to lemuria i think for instance the australian aborigines the papuans the vedas of sri lanka and the african bushmen are regarded as the oldest remnants of the lemurian uh, race mm. and so you have as you say some of the those those individuals living the traditional ways and still uh, expressing the culture, um, but, but hang on, how could how could Bushman, for instance, uh, be a remnant of Lemuria if Lemuria were giants and Bushmen are the opposite? Well, well, the Australians aren't giant, the Aborigines aren't giants either. They're, no, they're, their size has has decreased uh, in parallel with with all the rest of us. Right, right, right. There's periods of time, so that they don't have to be uh, giants, but they. It shows also the distribution. These races, these ancient races, are remnants of and showing the distribution of where the continent of Lemuria covered. For instance, it was near Africa um, and, and part of, of, of Africa at one point. 
especially the Madagascar and Mauritius area, but mm. not so much the other part of the continent of Africa, which came up at different times after Lemuria. Mm. We've been told by the Alaska anyway. So in my next book on it called Geography and Giants, I hope to map this out to show the transformation of these continents and, and island continents and the habitations of the various races and giants associated with them. I still say it must have been bad being a giant in the area of small small men. I mean, you could could they even breed with us? Wouldn't they be too big? Um, I'm not sure with you. Uh, the the thing I'm uh, I'm not sure they really understand the the way I see this, Al, mm. is that we're all giants, and there are mainly gigantic civilizations. Period in the past. Yeah, but weren't there uh, you know an overlapping? It was, when... it was, and and as in the Bible it says, the the sons of men saw the daughters uh, as as being fair and all that kind of stuff. There was yeah. mating of um, of much larger species with much smaller species, and this these, these stories um, extend in in many traditions. For instance, the Easter Island giants, the Lemurian giants on Easter Island, were eventually kicked off by the degenerated giants from Atlantis, because the Atlantis and Lemuria overlapped each other, of course. Hmm. And those particular giants from um, Atlantis uh, left Easter Island and went to the mainland. And there's a story that's brilliantly covered by an anthropologist of a tribe in, in South America that, I think it might be Ecuador, that has this story of how the giants came to the to, to the village mm -hmm. and um, and basically ate up the inhabitants over a period of years before they could finally... Literally ate them? Yes. So they were cannibals? Yes, they were cannibals. And the villagers ev eventually dug these pits to trap them and, and kill them over a period of years, but not before these giants had also bred with some of the women. Right. And uh, these giants had six toes and six fingers, which is a common uh, story that you hear in all the, the giant yeah. stories around the world. And this tribe to this day has uh, six fingers, six toes. Many of the people in those tribes wow. have six fingers and six toes. Plus, they are the most violent tribe probably in the world. The, the murder rate and the violence is extraordinary, apparently. Um, and it's it's like a like a hand down uh, from the uh, from these violent giants. They are incredibly violent, apparently. Hmm. So we have the good giants and the bad giants of of mythology. There's truth in that. Um, yeah. Atlantis was destroyed because the civilization had abused its um, god given powers. It had abused um, magic, sex. The incidence of theft was one of the one of the greatest crimes apparently on Atlantis, right. and so it was finally brought to an end, quite dramatically, with the first Atlantean flood, the first of four floods which occurred over a period of almost four million years. Mm. 